Hello folks and welcome to the Ocean State Cuisine. In today's video I'm going to be showing you how to make American Chop Suey. American Chop Suey is a fantastic dish which actually originated in New England in the United States. And throughout the rest of the United States it may be known as American Goulash. Now when people hear Chop Suey they automatically think Chinese. This is not a Chinese dish whatsoever. This is a pasta dish, which usually involves a nice tasty tomato sauce and chopped beef and a bell pepper and also other ingredients and seasonings. And the most common pasta used in this dish is elbows. And I tend to use the small or the medium size elbow pastas for this dish. So let's get started. First, let's take a look at the seasonings and the ingredients that we're going to be using for today's dish. Now looking at the left side of the screen, we're going to be using some parsley flakes. We're also going to be using some Italian seasoning. Then I'm also going to be using some salt and some fresh ground black pepper. Next to that, we got some minced garlic. And then we have an onion. And then next to the onion, we have a bell pepper. Now the most common bell pepper used for this is the green. But I like the flavor of the more ripe bell peppers, either red or yellow. The nice thing about a green pepper is that you could see it in the tomato sauce, so it adds color and contrast. But there's nothing like the flavor of a yellow or a red bell pepper. And then next we're going to be using a can of crushed tomatoes and then also a can of tomato soup. The can of crushed tomatoes is 28 ounces and the can of the tomato soup is 10 and 3 quarter ounces. And then next to that we have some dry oregano and then next to that we have some olive oil. Now something else I'm going to be using in today's dish too is red wine. And then last but not least is the ground beef. And I'm using for this amount about a pound and a half of ground beef. Now let's start putting this together and doing some cooking. So first we're going to work on the red pepper. And again, use any kind of bell pepper that you want. So first I'm going to start off by cutting off the top of the red pepper. Then I'm going to take out the insides. Or what they call a crosshair membrane. I'm going to pull that out and discard it, take out all the seeds, and now the top of the red pepper I also use too, so I just try to cut off some of that red pepper around the stem. And then throw away the excess. Then next what I'm going to do is that I'm going to rinse off the red pepper inside and out, give it a nice rinse. Markets do do a really good job today when it comes to washing vegetables, but especially now with COVID going on, yeah, you got to be very careful. Bell peppers can sometimes be a pain when it comes to cutting them up. Uh, I think sometimes the best way to do it is the opposite side that I'm doing right here. But as long as you're careful, either side will work because they're not a vegetable that lays perfectly flat. So I'm cutting them into rather narrow strips. And then we're going to start dicing the pepper crossways across the strips. Then we're going to start dicing it up into smaller dices. Just eye the amount of pepper that you want to use. I actually didn't end up using the whole pepper. We also made a salad to go along with this, so I used some of this red pepper also in my salad. The red pepper's got a little bit of a sweetness to it, and it tastes really good. Now on the stove, I'm heating up a large skillet. 
in which we will be using to saute our ground beef and our diced onion. I actually use my electric dicer for my onion. So you could just dice up your onion any way that you want to. Now we're going to add some olive oil to the pan once it's heated enough. And now we're going to add the onion. And in the pan, if you use a large enough onion, I'm only using about half the onion right now. I love a lot of onion in my American chop suey. But what this onion is going to do is mainly flavor the beef. Now as always, when I saute onions, I always add some salt. It's called sweating the onion. Again, this releases the juices and the oils and the flavor from the onion. And then we're going to hit it with some black pepper. And if you look in the background, you're going to see a little small dog, and that is not my dog. A friend of ours comes over usually every Saturday, and we have dinner together, and this is what I'm making for today's dinner. He is the only small dog I know that doesn't bark all the time, very kind, very polite, just really obedient. Okay, enough about the dog, and let's get back to the food. All right, now we're just going to stir around our uh, sautéed onions here. That was an outer skin that I just noticed and I just removed it from the uh, pan. And we could definitely hear that nice sizzle, letting us know that those onions are definitely sauteing very, very nice. Next, we're gonna get ready to add the ground beef. Now I like to push my onions aside when I'm starting off cooking the ground beef off. So this way there's more contact between the meat and the pan. So that it browns more evenly. Now in the UK they have a sauce that's very similar to this. I think it's called bouillon A or something like that. And it's very similar to American chop suey. So I'm just breaking up the ground beef now and we're just going to saute that off. Now you don't have to go totally well done because it's still going to simmer for a couple of hours in the actual sauce. But I cook mine up to about medium well. One time soon I'll make a video showing you guys my pasta sauce. My regular pasta sauce for lasagna, you know, all kinds of pasta that we eat. And our pasta sauces consist of tons of meat. We make a very heavy meat sauce. Now right here, I just added some minced garlic, maybe about two teaspoons. But yeah, the regular pasta sauce that I do make for other kind of pasta dishes has pepperoni in it and has beef. Sometimes we even put some pork chops in it, sauteed pork chops, and of course meatballs. Anything that we have on hand, that goes great in a sauce, but the pepperoni really makes it. So I'll be coming out with a video covering that very soon. Now in goes some salt and some pepper into the ground beef. As we see right here. Whenever I saute ground beef like this and I break it up a bit, I use this big uh, salad stainless steel fork that I have. It works great for this. But in America Chop Suey, I like to have my ground beef somewhat a little chunky. Now we're going to fold in the onions and we're going to mix everything together now. And now we can see that the ground beef is cooking pretty good. Now we're going to turn up the heat and we can see the oils and the juices now that came out of that ground beef. Now we're going to add some love, which is the red wine. And as we know, whenever you're using alcohol, you want to turn the heat up pretty good so that it cooks off the excess alcohol so it doesn't give a bitter taste to your dish. So now we're just going to saute this for about a minute or two, and then we're going to start adding it to our sauce. Now in a nice sized pot, we're going to start putting our sauce together. So first I'm going to add some olive oil. And I also want to say too that this sauce, I love it when it's oily. I actually add more olive oil later on to the actual sauce. And olive oil is a very healthy oil. In Italy years ago, 
people used to actually drink shot glasses of this stuff. It is excellent for the skin. So now I'm adding the rest of my chopped onion. Because after all, the sautéed onion, a lot of that disintegrated. And we want to taste that onion and see that onion in the actual final product. And again, as always, we're going to salt and pepper the onion again. And now in goes the bell pepper. I'm going to now give it a quick stir, make sure everything's incorporated. You can see it's steaming pretty good. And now I'm going to hit it with some black pepper. And now I'm just waiting for the heat to come back up because I'm getting ready now to add some more red wine. And we're going to add a nice couple of splashes of the red wine. Again, give it a nice stir to make sure everything's incorporated. And we're just going to let that simmer a bit just to cook off some of the alcohol. And now in goes our ground beef. And I don't drain. I add everything that's inside the saute pan, the oils, and the juices. That's where all the flavor is. Going to give this a nice stir now. And now we're ready to add our can of crushed tomatoes and then the tomato soup. The tomato soup is kind of what gives it the American chopped suey flavor. Because if you did just use the crushed tomatoes, it would basically taste like a hamburger or a ground beef sauce. So the tomato soup adds a little bit of a distinct flavor, and when mixed and simmered, it just tastes excellent. This is one of my best pasta dishes out of all. And again, as always, whenever you add in something new to the sauce, you want to give it a nice stir. Do you know, for years and years, until I worked at a restaurant, I used to say stare, like stare a car. And when I worked at the restaurant, they corrected me about that. They says, what do you mean by stare? They're like, it's stir. And granted, I was not young. I was in my 40s. So now I'm going to start seasoning up the sauce now. So we're going to add some salt. And then some black pepper. Now I'm going to add some oregano, which is a Greek spice. Or I should say herb. But it makes tomato sauces taste fantastic. And many other kinds of dishes. And then some Italian seasoning. Now, if you have any basil, you could add a little bit of that too, but basil's also inside the Italian seasoning. And now I'm adding some dry parsley flakes. If you have the fresh parsley, go ahead and use that. And that's pretty much it for most of the seasonings and herbs. Now we're just going to give it a nice little stir again. And now it's time to cover with a lid and just let it simmer. And I simmer this for a good couple of hours on a very low heat. But then I realized that I was missing something. And when it comes to tomato sauce, this is something you do not want to leave out. And that is garlic. Now we did use garlic earlier when we sauteed the uh, beef, but the sauce is also going to need some too. And I'm using minced garlic and I used about two teaspoons worth of garlic. Now we're just going to give it another stir. 
And then I added more olive oil to the sauce and then we covered it and now we're finally gonna simmer it now for a good couple of hours. And after about an hour, this is what it starts to look like. We can see that it's got a nice film of the olive oil on the top, which is just excellent. Because every now and then, you still want to give it a nice stir. And then cover it up again and let it continue cooking for about another hour or so. Then after a few hours simmering on a low heat, this is what it looks like. It's pretty much done now. Now it's time to cook the pasta. And for this, you want to cook it firm or al dente. Trust me, you do not want mushy pasta in American chop suey. But if you like your pasta more soft, then just cook it a little bit longer. So I basically go strictly by taste in it and see what the firmness is at. So after about six to seven minutes, that's when I start tasting it. Seeing it is a smaller pasta, it's not going to take that long. So you may want to go by the directions on the box and see what they say. But again, as long as you taste it early enough, it's always going to let you know. Now, are you guys ready? Let's give it a look at the final dish. And there we are, folks. American Chop Suey. Now, if you like Parmesan cheese, it's a must on this. And then if you have some of the sauce left over to refrigerate it for the next day, you may want to put some of the sauce aside and put that in its own container because it's going to dry up as it sits overnight if you add it all to the pasta. And another thing is that if it does dry out a bit, if you add a little bit of butter to it the next day when you go to heat it up and then add that Parmesan cheese and maybe some crushed red pepper flakes, Oh man, this is awesome. And I always serve it with a nice hot Italian crusted roll or some garlic bread as we see here. So there you are folks, and make it for your kids, they're gonna love you for it. Until the next time, thanks again for stopping by and checking out the Ocean State Cuisine. Feel free to sub up for more future delicious videos coming your way. And please comment down below as always, because we love to hear from you. You all have a great day now. Take care. Bye-bye.